are back with another GIMP tutorial and today we're going to do a lesson on touching up our own personal photos. I know that when I have picture day or when I bring my own pictures in to GIMP, um, it seems like, man, when I zoom in, all those imperfections really pop out and I think, oh, it's because I had more zits on picture day and the truth is maybe it is true. Or maybe that's just how I am. But I know it's natural to want to maybe uh, touch up some of those imperfections. And so we're going to go ahead and do that today. All right. And if you want to follow along with me with this same picture, I put the link in the description below. So go ahead and download that. And when you get it open, we will get started. So uh, the first tool we will use is right here. It's called the healing tool. It looks like a Band-Aid. And when I double click on that, I am given some options. But basically what it does, um, as you scan around the face, you'll see we have some very good areas of complexion. She, this is a beautiful young lady, but she has some minor uh, blemishes we might want to cover up. And so I find a good area of her complexion, say right here. I will hold control and click on my mouse, and you can see that it leaves this little circle. That is our sample spot. So anywhere I click right now, so take example this little red spot here. I click and it applies uh, an algorithm. It, it takes all the different features of this sample spot and applies it to the area that I am clicking on. And so really I'm just going to click around the face and cover up those areas. When I move to different areas of the face I like to take new samples because sometimes the coloring or lighting is slightly different in those areas. So feel free to take new samples by holding control and oops, control and clicking and then apply around the face. So as you go along um, and do that to all the spots that you want to do on your image, um, I will do that as well. I will speed this up in the video so you don't have to watch me do this for the next three minutes. And then we will come back and talk about the next step. <laughs> Okay, so at this point, you can see already our picture is looking much, much better, and you could be content with this, and that would be great. I think it does look fantastic, but there are a few more things that we could do uh, that to make it even look a slightly better. So go ahead and follow along with me right now. I'm going to go to my layers window up here, and I'm going to go down here and click on duplicate this layer um, and what we're, we're gonna do some things with this top layer here <clears throat> so the first thing we're gonna do is go to colors and we're gonna go to invert and it's gonna look rather scary at first don't worry we are not done um, now I'm gonna go to change my mode from normal to vivid light and basically this increases the contrast um, and right now we can't see a lot, but uh, it increases the contrast of those areas of dark and light. Um, but we're not done because we're going to apply a filter. And so we're going to go filter, enhance, and then we're going to go to high pass. And at this point, uh, we have some uh, th things we can do. Um, the high pass basically keeps the major details but smooths out some of the other things and so um, I like to change the settings here and you can you can kind of play with them um, I, I pulled this up way too high just to show you but you can see that it really smooths things out um, but that doesn't look realistic and so I've found um, at least with this photo somewhere around 30 um, is is where I want to go. I still want to keep it realistic, but you see how it kind of smooths some things out. Um, also, if you play with the contrast, um, you'll see that it does some other things. So that does not look good at all. 
And so, again, somewhere closer to one or slightly under one it, uh, is what I found works well with this photo. So you can still see some of the detail here. So I'm going to press OK. Um, but right now, this looks like it's been touched, but it looks a little too dreamy. Um, and so we got to do at least one more thing. So I'm going to go to this layer. I'm going to right click. And we're going to add a layer mask. We need to make sure that we're keeping black for full transparency because we're going to do something in a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. And you'll notice, oh, it went right back to the original layer. And so um, right now you can still see uh, some things going on. And so we're going to take our airbrush tool. So I'm going to double click on that. Um, and we want to make sure that we're coloring with white because what white's going to do is it's going to reveal that uh, the, uh, the uh, filter that we had put on where it's a little bit more uh, smoothed out. And so I like to change it to oh, a flow of around 34, um, 35, mid 30s is will, will work out well. I need to um, up the size here. And so basically, I'm going to go around my photo and begin applying this. And what, what it's going to do um, is it begins to allow that um, filter we put on just for the skin area. And so we didn't want the whole picture to look dreamy, but it allows it, the skin to kind of be smoothed out a little bit more. So it keeps the really because we're not touching the hair and the other parts, it keeps the detail in that, um, but it smooths out the skin areas. And so when you get into places around her eye, I need to make my brush smaller. You could jump up here and change it, or I like to use the brackets on my keyboard. You can kind of he probably hear that. Um, and it's, it makes my um, brush smaller. And so again, I'll make it a little smaller as I dive in. I'm going to zoom in because I want to make sure I get in there well. And so we're just smoothing things out here. Um, go ahead as I get to this larger area, increase the size of my brush. And you can see the nice thing is, even though I'm, it gives it uh, a much smoother layer, you can still see the details of the pores and, and whatnot, uh, which is important because we want it to be realistic after we're done. And so, I'm going to go ahead and even increase my brush a little bit more as I go down to the neck. And we'll just finish up this area. And let's zoom back out and see what we got. And right now we're looking pretty good. And so I could be done at this point if I wanted to. Actually, I want to touch up right there, I noticed. Um, but sometimes I know these this young lady's teeth look actually really pretty good. I know when I look at mine, they look a little bit more yellowish. Um, if you wanted to try to do a quick, there's whole tutorials on whitening teeth. But one simple way, if you can do this well, is this tool right here called the Dodge Bird tool. I like to double click. I don't want to change the exposure up too much because it, it will bleach it out too much. Um, and know that. The, the more times you apply, so I'm going to kind of make my brush small as I, I really zoom in. So if, if you go over once, oops, I need to be on the bottom layer. If I go over once, you can see it's slowly lightening that up. Um, but if you go over and 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 over, it's going to continually making it brighter and wider. And that's not realistic. It looks like Bugs Bunny. So I'm going to back up. I really only want to do a few swipes to maybe look, make it look a little bit brighter. So I'm just going to clean that up. And actually, I, I probably I left so too many of the things I've done earlier. And I only need to go over it once. And that looks pretty good. So hopefully you find this helpful in editing maybe the pictures you've taken or your own photos. Um, uh, remember, be happy with yourself. You are beautiful and loved, and, but it is okay to want to have a professional looking photo. So make sure you export this as a JPEG. I hope you enjoyed this, um, and I'll see you next time on the next tutorial.